tell us a little bit about what you're going to, the piece you're going to do for us. Um, so it's a one-person show about a, a girl called My Name is Sirius who's growing up in rural Ireland in the 80s. And it's from the end of the play. So I'm kind of going to spoil the play by telling you what has happened up till this piece. Um, she's, she's grown up without a mum. Her mum died giving birth to her and she's kind of carried around this immense guilt. And her best friend Siobhan is kind of the biggest figure in her life, kind of her role model. But Siobhan's just an Egypt, the same age as her. And Siobhan kind of ends up leading her down the wrong garden path. And Sirish ends up getting pregnant after a night out when she's like 15 and goes to England in secret. And I was very keen that I wanted to make a play where it was an aspect of the play. Like, I really believe that abortion is just an aspect. It's a thing that happens in people's lives. It doesn't have to define them. It doesn't have to, you don't have to walk around with a big cloud of regret over your head for the rest of your life. So it, it, this is kind of the end part and it's her kind of coming to terms with what's happened and she's in her attic and she sews she loves sewing and she's always on her sewing machine and she's kind of putting different pieces of fabric together to kind of kind of make sense of her life um so this is the very end of the play i kept myself to myself in the days after england i didn't feel like seeing anyone or doing anything I told Dad I had a really bad tummy bug and he believed me, saying he had never seen me looking so washed out. On my first morning at home on my own, I lay on the floor in the black and white hallway, listening to the silence ringing in my ears. It felt like my life had been sewn up all wrong in stitching I couldn't rip back. That afternoon I went down the town to buy some milk for Brendan. He was going through the white stuff at the rate of knots these days. And I wanted to get him some to say thank you for being so good to me before I went away. The night before I left, I tapped on his door and went in and sat in the end of his bed. I told him that I had to go away for the weekend, up to Dublin, for an interview for a job next year. When he asked me what the job was, I couldn't think of anything to say and I just burst into tears. <laughs> he told me not to worry at all, that he'd tell Da and he hoped I got the job. <laughs> I went to Heaney's for the milk and I got a packet of fags for Mrs. Larkin too. I felt fierce bad that we hadn't called on her in so long. When I was coming out of the shop, I saw Siobhan across the road, outside Wilson's, having a cigarette. She looked as striking as ever. Her long red hair was down around her shoulders. Her silver scrunchie was on her wrist. You well, love? Do you fancy coming in for a quick drink? I wanted to drop the milk and run across the road to her. I wanted to race her up the hill to the water tower and spin her round and around with her. I wanted to hug her and hold on to her and make everything go back to the way it used to be. Oh no, thanks, Siobhan. I should be getting back. And I turned for home. Brendan would be looking for his milk. The next day I had a bit more energy and I knew what I had to do. I got up and dressed into my duck egg blue dress that Auntie Mary had given me for Christmas. It was a bit big on me. I was thinner now, but I liked how it made me feel. Graceful, like a lady. And then I went out the back picking flowers in the field behind our house. I wanted to get a big colourful bunch, but all I could find were wild daisies and dandelions. But the white and yellow looked nice together and I put a bow around them that I had sewed myself. We only ever visited Mam once a year on her anniversary, my birthday, the 3rd of January. Da hated the place. He said that there was no point in crying over a stone in the ground. I felt nervous going on my own, but I just put one foot in front of the other, and before I knew it, I was down at the church, making my way through the gravelly car park in the rusty gate. I picked my way through the mismatched graves, some of the old stone ones were crumbling and covered with weeds. Others, the shiny marble ones, looked like they'd just been freshly polished. Mam's was a plain grey one down the back on the left. I like to think that she wouldn't have minded that it was nothing special, <laughs> that she wouldn't have wanted anyone fussing over her. When I put the flowers down, I couldn't help thinking how small and dull they looked. I had a pain in my chest and in my heart. Why did you have to die, ma'am? Why did you have to go and die and leave me on my own, ma'am? If I could have chosen, I would have let you live instead, ma'am. 
And it's not my fault. And I know that dad thinks it is, but it's not, ma'am. And it's not my fault that I look the spit of you. I never asked to look the same as you. And I didn't want to go to England, ma'am. But I had to. I couldn't have a baby. And I'm tired, ma'am. I'm tired of always feeling sad and guilty. And suddenly, there was a big gust of wind and my duck egg blue dress was flapping and I had goosebumps all over my skin. And I realized, mom wouldn't want me to be sad. She'd want me to be brave and happy. She chose my name weeks before I was even born. Sirisha means freedom. Mam named me to be free. I'm nearly finished my quilt now. It's mad to think how many hours I've spent up here sewing away while Dan and Brendan were sound asleep. It's not perfect. It's a bit rough around the edges. But it'll do. I'm proud of it. <laughs>